a computer program beat a human brain at the ancient Chinese board game of Go. The final score, four to one, a triumph for artificial intelligence equipped with human intuition. The victory of a program over a human in the ancient board game Go has sparked intrigue and, in some cases, concern. It shows that a machine has approximated human intuition and outsmarted the best human brain in the game. It's something that scientists hadn't expected to happen for at least another decade. And it's a giant leap for artificial intelligence, showing that machines can learn on their own. Alphabet's DeepMind group is in charge of creating general-purpose artificial intelligence, AGI, technology. Google DeepMind is another name for this technology. DeepMind learns from experience and uses raw pixel data as input. While the concept of general purpose AI is debatable, Google set out to create and improve their AI property on a number of fronts. DeepMind was given the task of learning games on its own. When it was given the task of beating an Atari game library, it learned to comprehend the games without modifying the code. After some time, the AI was able to play the games more effectively and efficiently than humans. DeepMind set out to defeat the board game Go in order to push the bounds of AI. Go presents a computational problem for AI, owing to the difficulty of deciding amongst the vast number of possible plays in the game. DeepMind created a unique project dubbed AlphaGo, which is a computer program that plays the board game. AlphaGo defeated the world's top player in 2017 after a series of supervised learning AI models. In the same year, DeepMind published AlphaGo Zero, a new version of the software that used unsupervised reinforcement learning and regularly outperformed prior versions. DeepMind Histora DeepMind was founded in 2010 and was purchased by Google in 2014. In 2016, the business said that one of its programs has defeated a human player in Go, one of the most complex games utilized in gaming theory to build deep learning and artificial intelligence paradigms. In our scenario, the robot is a convolutional neural network dot because our robot receives inputs in the same manner a human player does, it sees the image on the screen, and the reward change in points after each move, and that is all the knowledge it requires to make a decision, this is virtually true end-to-end -end deep learning. What does the robot produce? Ideally, we want the robot to choose the action that it believes would yield the greatest future benefit. Instead of picking the action directly, we'll have it assign values to each of the 18 joystick actions. To put it another way, the value V for every action A indicates the robot's expectation of future reward if it executes that action A. This neural network is essentially a value function. It takes the screen state and reward change as inputs and returns the various values associated with each conceivable action. So you can choose the most valuable action, or any other action dependent on how you program the overall player. Introduction Let's say you've got the game screen and want to tell a neural network what's on it. We don't process the inputs in any manner other than immediately feeding the image into the neural network. The other option is to construct a numerical summary of what's happening on the screen and feed it into the neural network. The former are called high-dimensional sensory inputs, whereas the latter are called handmade feature representations. Unlike supervised unsupervised learning, deep learning approaches do not work well with reinforcement learning. The majority of deep learning applications have required large training datasets with precise samples and labels. Alternatively, in unsupervised learning, the target cost function is still quite useful. But there's a catch in real life. As you may be aware real life rewards can be delayed many time steps, for example, knocking the opponent's queen in chess takes several moves, and each of those moves does not return the same immediate reward as the final move, even if one of those moves is more important than the final move. The rewards could also be noisy, for example, the points for a specific move are occasionally random and difficult to forecast furthermore, in DL, the input samples are usually presumed to be independent to one another. The training data for an image recognition network, for example, will contain a large number of randomly ordered and unrelated images. However, when learning how to play a game, the move strategy frequently depends on, not just the present state of the screen, but also previous states and moves. It's not easy to dismiss the possibility of a link. Why is it critical that our training data samples are unrelated to one another? Let's say you have five animal photographs and wanted to learn how to categorize them as cat or not cat. Is it true that if one of those photographs is of a cat, the chances of another image being a cat are increased? No. In a video game, however, one frame of the screen is inextricably linked to the next. 
and now for the next one. And so on. If a laser beam destroys your spaceship in 10 frames, I'm quite confident the 9th frame is a pretty solid indicator that the 10th frame will be awful. While learning, you don't want to dismiss the two frames that are only a few milliseconds apart as completely independent experiences because they clearly contain essential information about each other. They're both part of the same event, a laser beam colliding with your spaceship. As the robot learns new techniques, the training data itself changes in nature, making it more difficult to train on. What exactly does that imply? Assume you're a beginner chess player. When you play your first chess game, you use some basic techniques such as pushing forward, killing the pawn, as soon as possible, and so on. As you continue to learn those behaviors and enjoy taking pawns, those moves will function as your current training set. You try a new plan one day, sacrificing one of your own bishops in order to defend your queen and seize the other's rook. Bam, you realize how incredible this is. You've learned a new trick that you wouldn't have learned if you just kept practicing your prior newbie strategy. This is what it means to have a non-stationary data distribution, which is uncommon in supervised and unsupervised learning. You think about it, human intelligence has created all of modern civilization in a way that shows the power of intelligence and how broad it can be used.